Hi, my name is Adam Jamili, and this is my third year as a Kipco British Champion Series Ambassador. I love my racing and have always been fascinated by the mental resilience that jockeys show day in and day out. I'm here to meet top jockey James Doyle, talk to him a little bit about his mental preparation going into a big race and how he deals with that and a little bit about myself as well. I just want to get a little bit of insight into sort of more the mental side of things. So I think if you do any sport and, that's, and there's spectators at the sport, you, you open yourself up to abuse and opinions from every, everyone. Like everyone's got an opinion, everyone is an, an expert in, in what you're doing. You can look at it either way. I, I sometimes find it quite entertaining and sometimes I read it and go, well, you know, that was actually quite justifiably so. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it, it's, it's something that I guess some guys would, would, it would really get them down. But I find, I try and use it as a sort of way of... Sort of um, motivation maybe. Motivation, yeah, trying to prove people wrong and... and, and yeah, try and have a half a laugh about it and a bit of a joke. And, yeah, yeah, but it's so easy for anyone to just pick up a phone now, type a little message and then put it back in their pocket and then carry on with their day and they don't realise maybe the effect you, could get, you could get 50 comments and 40 of them could be positive and, and like the rest would be really negative and you only really focus on the negative and, rather than the 40 really positive ones. I had a tough one here actually where I rode a filly called One Master and the race didn't sort of plan how we thought it would. She's quite a strong horse who, who you have to sit at the back to get her to relax. The filly that led the race got quite an easy lead and skipped off the front end and by the time I sort of got through it was just marginally too late. Like we finished off really well but just didn't quite get there so that was, uh, that was quite a tough one. That looks so close. Oh. Right to the line. No way. I reckon another Oh, no. maybe that, another, it's, it's another 100 metres you might I, have had I, that. I thought I was getting there but I think I felt Maybe the she the leader just, just pulled out a little bit more near the line, but like I say, because it had no pressure early, it was able to reserve its stamina oh and it just helped it through the line. So after that, that one master race, I think there's a few brutal tweets here. Let's, sure let's see what was. you think of it. What do you, <laughs> what, what, what do you say to that? Does that? If you see something like that, does that just make you laugh or do you just... I just, honestly felt there's nothing I could do, so you just, you just park it I away. I feel a bit bad a bit out. James Doyle, 410, what a completely useless clown. I guess that's where we're lucky as well in the sense that we have six, seven, eight rides a day and you know if one goes wrong you can have them Twitter trolls and people hammering yeah. it but then the next one might go right and you'll win on a horse. That exactly, for you especially. One thing yeah. that helps us mentally that you know you can, if you are low after a bad race the next one could go super well and then you're back, back, back up on, on top form. I mean what, what about yourself, like how do you mentally prepare for four races knowing that every what was it, every couple of weeks yeah. and with the Olympics coming and things like that how for me I found working with a psychologist I, I found mentally training as effective as physically training so when I do feel like I want to just give up I know I feel of think of why I'm doing my sport I'm committed to my sport it's what will separate you from being great or good to being great to being the best and I feel like that comes from the mental side of sport and I feel like working on that and going through sort of you need the bad times to then sort of reflect on that and then build up to the good times. So like at the Olympics in 2016, I missed out on the, an Olympic medal by three thousandths of a second. And that mentally was one of the hardest things I've had to come to terms with. That really affected me for a few months afterwards. But I use that as motivation every single day. I think of that moment and how close I was. And I don't want to have that feeling again because I remember how bad it felt. But I guess they control us all they want, but yeah. they can't take away the, the, you know, the amazing days we've both had. Yeah, for sure. Like I think well, a lot of those relay based, and we're actually the relay world champions, which is which is quite nice as well. And we did that in London, and to do that at the Olympic Stadium, my family was there, all my friends were there. That was something I, I will always remember, and to be part of that squad and, and break the British record as well was was fantastic. And mentally, like I said, it just motivates you because I remember that feeling of being sort of down but the, the, the positive feelings sort of like are so much more than that and they that's what I do remember as well so for me that was sort of one of the biggest sort of achievements I've had and, and something that really makes me happy and, and mentally really positive so it's great what about yourself what's what sort of the what sort of the moments you probably you've got loads of moments well, just pick your favorite one <laughs> I've been lucky I think I've won 31 oh. group one races now so it's been, wow. it's been a wonderful journey so far yeah. and, you know each and every one of them are, are very special to me and um, 
it's, it's just a case of the more you feel it yourself, the more you do well and the more big races that you win, the more you just, it makes you hungrier and hungrier. I was lucky enough to ride a horse called Blue Point who, um, he won two of the British Champion Series races at Royal Ascot this year. He won on the Tuesday and then we raced him again on the, on the Saturday, which oh, wow. is quite rare. That was a spectacular day, but it's like you say, it's the good days that just really spur you on and the bad days, they have to spur you on as well. Yeah, you absolutely. just have to think positive. So despite being in obviously two very different sports, I think we've seen they're both very emotionally challenging. You have to be physically fit, but the mental resilience you need has to be up there with the best in the world, otherwise you'll never be at that top level. Yeah, it's been awesome to get to hear what you've got to say and, and, and actually get an insight into your world of things, because I would never understand that and I'm guessing vice versa as well.